Ladies and gentlemen, boys and ghouls, it's time for Below Grade Level. Listener beware, you're in for a scare. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Below Grade Level, the show where we take the books that we read as kids and read them as adults and ruin them. I am one of your hosts, Jonathan Eaton, and not with me, as always, are Becky Eaton and Chris Lesky, and they're not with me because we are doing another legacy book. It is Goosebumps number five, Curse of the Mummy's Tomb. We recorded this, I don't even know, four years ago, Year, years ago, multiple years ago. Um... The good news is, this is the second to last Goosebumps book that we previously recorded, um, so it'll be the second to last uh, Legacy book. So after the next one, we can actually get back into um, reading some <laughs> new Goosebumps books, and new as in, you know, like almost 30 years old. But hey, whatever! So with that said, let's get into uh, part one of Goosebumps number five. Curse of the Mummy's Tomb. Take it away, younger us. <laughs> Chapter one. I saw the Great Pyramid and got thirsty. Let's <laughs> <laughs> end it there. It's not going to get end, any better yeah, than the that. End of <laughs> Stein yet. Maybe it was all the sand, I thought like an idiot. So dry and yellow it seemed to stretch on forever. It even made the sky look dry. I poked my mom in the side. Ow, she said. Mom, I'm really thirsty. Not now, she said. She had one hand up on her forehead, shielding her eyes from the bright sun as she stared up at the enormous pyramid. Not now? What does not now mean? God damn it. I was thirsty. Now! Someone bumped me from behind and apologized in a foreign language. I never dreamed when I saw the Great Pyramid there would be so many other tourists, because who would come to see one of the eight wonders of the world? Seven? Eight? How many are there? Nine? Seven. Uh-huh. Seven, I think. Seven. seven, not nine. <laughs> I'm not an Egyptologist. <laughs> They're not one. all in Egypt. Um, <laughs> I guess half the people in the world decided to spend their Christmas vacation in Egypt this year. Oh, how things have changed. <laughs> but mom, I said, I didn't mean to whine. It was just that my throat was so dry. I'm really thirsty. <laughs> We can't get you a drink now, she answered, staring at the pyramid. Stop acting like you're four. You're 12, remember? And 12-year-olds are never annoying. (laughs) 12-year-olds get thirsty, too, I muttered. All this sand in the air, it's making me gag. Look at the pyramid, she said, sounding a little irritated. That's why we came here. We didn't come here to get a drink. But I'm choking, I cried, gasping and holding my throat. Okay, so I wasn't choking. I exaggerated a little just to get her attention. But she pulled the brim of her straw hat down and continued to stare up at the pyramid, which shimmered in the heat. Do people just look at them? I thought you'd go inside. Yeah, yeah you, you can go in. inside. But just, like, stand out there for, like, a solid hour staring at it. Sure is triangular. I decided to try my dad. As usual, he was studying the handful of guidebooks he always carried everywhere. I don't think he'd even looked at the pyramid yet. He always misses everything because he always has his nose buried in a guidebook. Dad, I'm really thirsty, I said, whispering as if my throat were strained to get my message across. Wow, do you know how wide the pyramid is? He asked, staring at a picture of the pyramid in his book. Drink every time they say pyramid. I'm thirsty, Dad. <laughs> it's 13 acres drink wide, what? Gabe. There's nothing to drink. Right? Like, if they had a drink, wouldn't they just hand him his fucking juice box so he would shut up? It's 13 acres wide, Gabe, he said, really excited. Do you know what it's made of? Not water. (laughs) I wanted to say silly putty. What a funny joke, Gabe. Yep. He's always testing me. Whenever we go on a trip, he always asks me a million questions like that. I don't think I've ever answered one right. They're like the Kennedys. (laughs) (laughs) Some kind of stone, I answered. That's right. He smiled at me, then turned back to his book. It's made of limestone. Limestone blocks. It says here that some of the blocks weigh up to a thousand tons. Whoa, I said. That's more than you and Mom put together. This is awful. Waka waka. (laughs) He turned his eyes from the book and frowned at me. Not funny, Gabe. You know I take my tourism very seriously. (laughs) 
Did you add that or is that? I added that. (laughs) Just kidding, I said. Dad's a little sensitive about his weight, so I try to tease him about it as often as I can. (laughs) You little shit. (laughs) Awesome. (laughs) How do you think the ancient Egyptians moved stones that weighed a thousand tons, he asked. Slaves. (laughs) Aliens. Quiz time wasn't over. I took a guess. In trucks? He laughed. (laughs) Ha, ha, ha. Trucks, they didn't have the wheel. I shielded my eyes and stared up at the pyramid. It was really huge, much bigger than it looks in pictures, and much drier. (laughs) I couldn't imagine how they pulled those big stones across the sand without wheels. (laughs) I don't know, I confessed. I'm really thirsty. How did they not think to bring a couple bottles of water to the fucking desert? They're in the desert. Oh, man. Get right up on there. All right. No one knows how they did it, Dad said. So it was a trick question. Dad, I really need a drink. (laughs) Not now, he said. He squinted at the pyramid. Gives you a funny feeling, doesn't it? In the down below? (laughs) (laughs) Gives me a thirsty feeling, I said, trying to get my point across. No, I mean, it gives me a funny feeling to think that our ancestors, yours and mine, Gabe, nope. may have walked around these pyramids or even helped to build them. It gives me kind of a chill. Maybe How they're Egyptian Americans. Or they're <laughs> Jewish. Yeah, like you Egyptian, yeah. bro? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I told him he was right. I was, It was kind of exciting. We're Egyptian, you see. Oh, oh well, all right. Fuck me, right? <laughs> I'm just a big racist. I assume they were white. I did too. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sign. sure literally every other character in his books have all been Ever, white. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're Egyptian, you Fifth see. Fifth book in. I mean, both Branching sets out. of my grandparents came from Egypt. They moved to the United States around 1930. My mom and dad were born in Michigan. We were all very excited to see the country our, our ancestors came from. I wonder if your Uncle Ben is down (laughs) inside that pyramid right now, Dad said, shielding his eyes from the sun with one hand, while the image of Spider-Man flashed across. (laughs) Uh, Uncle Ben Ben Hassad? (laughs) What? Uncle Ben Kenobi? Yeah, I know. (laughs) Oh, man. I'd nearly forgotten about my uncle, the famous archaeologist. Uncle Ben was another one of the reasons he had decided to come to Egypt over the holidays. That and the fact that my mom and dad had some business to do in Cairo and Alexandria and some other places. All right, I'm calling it right now. The uncle shows up and, like, saves the day. Like, I've been secretly been fighting mummies. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I'm actually a mummy slayer. Ma- is there a thing? <laughs> Mom and dad have their own business. They sell refrigeration equipment. It usually isn't very exciting. But sometimes they travel to neat places like Egypt, and I go with them, and they don't give me any fucking water. (laughs) I turned my eyes to the pyramids and thought about my uncle. Uncle Ben and his workers were digging around in the Great Pyramid, exploring and discovering new mummies, I guess. He had always been fascinated by your ancestor's homeland. He had lived in Egypt for many years. Uncle Ben was an expert on pyramids and mummies. I even saw his picture once in National Geographic. When are we going to see Uncle Ben, I asked, tugging Dad's arm. I accidentally tugged too hard and it popped right out of his socket. The guidebooks (laughs) fell all out of his hands. I helped him pick them up and his arm. I put it back in. He he had the disease Samuel L. Jackson did, an unbreakable. (laughs) They call me Mr. Glass, son. (laughs) Not today, Dad said. Not today, Dad said, making a face. He didn't like to bend over to pick things up because he's too fat. His stomach got in the way. Really? Oh, God. (laughs) Fat Egyptian. Ben's going to meet us in Cairo (laughs) in a few days. Why don't we go up to the pyramid and see if he's there as- there now, I asked impatiently. We're not allowed, Dad replied. <laughs> Look, camels! Mom poked me on the shoulder and pointed. Those are people, Mom. <laughs> sure enough, some people had arrived on camels. One of the camels seemed to be having a coughing fit. I guess he was thirsty, too. Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. <laughs> Maybe I should go slice that camel's hump open and drink his water, I thought. I feel like it would be really extra awkward to be riding a camel that's coughing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't feel bad for him. He's acting out. <laughs> the people riding the camels were tourists, and they looked very uncomfortable. So you're right. 
They didn't seem to know what to do next. Do you know how to get down from a camel? I asked my dad. He was squinting at the pyramid, <laughs> studying the top of it. No, how? <laughs> you don't get down from a camel, I said. You get down from a duck. Ugh. Waka waka. I know, a it's comedian. a very old joke, but my dad and I never get tired of it. You mean you. Your dad hates you. <laughs> <laughs> He's hoarding water bottles and he won't give them to you. Do you see the camels, Mom asked. I'm not blind, I replied. Ooh. Being thirsty always puts me in a bad mood. Because it happens so often. Besides what, was, bleh, besides what was so exciting about camels, they were really gross looking and they smelled like my gym socks after a basketball game. What's your problem, Mom asked, fiddling with her straw hat. I told you I'm thirsty. Ugh! Gabe, really? I'm tired of reading that. Gabe, really? She glanced at Dad, then went back to staring at the pyramid. Dad, do you think Uncle Ben can take us inside the pyramid? I asked enthusiastically. That would be really... That would really be outstanding. It's impossible to say that and not sound sarcastic. <laughs> No, I don't think so, he said. He tucked his guidebooks into his armpit so he could raise his binoculars to his eyes. I really don't think so, Gabe. I don't think it's allowed. Gabe is now Chandler Bing. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, yes. Yes. <clears throat> Could I be any more thirsty? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't hide my disappointment. I had all these fantasies about going down into the pyramid with my uncle, discovering <laughs> mummies and ancient treasures. Fighting off ancient Egyptians who had come back to life to defend their sacred tomb. What are you, the MC? <laughs> <laughs> and escaping after a wild chase, just like Indiana Jones. <laughs> I'm afraid you just have to appreciate the pyramid from the outside, Dad said, peering over the yellow sand, trying to focus the binoculars. I've already appreciated it, I told him glum <laughs> glumly. <laughs> Can we go get a fucking drink now? <laughs> <laughs> Little, little did I know that in a few days, Mom and Dad would be gone, and I would be deep inside the pyramid we were staring at. Not just inside it, but trapped inside it. Sealed inside it. Not just inside Probably it, but forever. making love to it. <laughs> yeah. Let's see, hold on. Not just inside it, penetrating it. It wasn't a whole page, though. You can keep going. Okay. Yeah, you can keep going. Yeah, go through that one. <clears throat> ah. We drove from Al Jazeera. Chapter 2. Chapter 2. Page 8. <laughs> we drove from Al Jizza, Al Jizza, <laughs> back to Cairo in the funny little rental car Dad had picked up at the airport. He was almost too big to fit in it. Oh my God! It wasn't a long drive, but it seemed long to me, because I'm a child. <laughs> <laughs> the car was just a little bit bigger than some of my old remote control cars, and my head hit the ceiling with every bump. So I could only imagine how Dad's fat ass felt. <laughs> I brought my Game Boy with me, but Mom made me put it away so that I could watch the Nile as the road followed along its bank. It was very wide and very brown. <laughs> like the shit I took after eating all that curry. <laughs> no one else in your class is seeing the Nile this Christmas, Mom said, the hot wind blowing her brown hair through the open car window, because I have an Oedipus complex. <laughs> Can I play with my Game Boy now, I asked? I mean, when you get right down to it, a river is a river. An hour or so later, we were back in Cairo with its narrow, crowded streets. Dad made a wrong turn and drove us into some kind of market, and we were trapped in a little alley behind a herd of goats for nearly half an hour. Dad ate one of them. <laughs> <laughs> it screamed the whole time. I didn't get a drink until we got back to the hotel. Oh my god. And by that time, my tongue was the size of a salami. <laughs> and I was pissing dust. <laughs> I was... Hanging down to the floor just like Elvis's. Uh, tongue? He's our Cocker Spaniel back home. Okay. I knew there was a Woo! dog. Right. There's always a there dog. There's always a dog. Uh, I was like, wow, do you know that about Elvis? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll say one nice thing about Egypt. The Coke tastes just as good as the Coke back home, especially when you snort it. <laughs> it's the classic Coke, too. <laughs> Not the back alley shit. <laughs> and they give you plenty of ice, which I like to crunch in my teeth. Is this in the book? <laughs> no, no. Okay, no. all right. But he, he is talking about Coke. Yeah. <laughs> Just, you know, never mind. <laughs> we had a suite in the hotel, two bedroom and a sort of living room. If you look out the window, you could see a tall glass skyscraper across the street, just like you'd see in any city. There was a TV in the living room, but everyone spoke Arabic on it. 
The shows didn't look too interesting anyway. Mainly lots of news. The only channel in English was CNN, but that was news too. No shit, kid. <laughs> uh, we had just started to talk about where to go for dinner when the phone rang. Dad went into the bedroom to answer it. A few minutes later, he called Mom in, and I could hear the two of them discussing something. They were talking very quietly, so I figured it had something to do with me they didn't want me to hear. As usual, I was right. <laughs> they both came out of the bedroom a few minutes. Later, looking kind of worried. My first thought was that my grandmother had called to say that something bad had happened to Elvis back home. <laughs> I really loved Graceland. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong, I asked. Who called? Your dad and I have to go to Alexandria. Right away, Mom said, sitting down beside me on the couch. Gonna see a man about a library. <laughs> huh? Alexandria? We weren't supposed to go there until the end of the week. Business, Dad said. <laughs> An important business customer wants to meet us first thing tomorrow morning. <laughs> we have to take the plane that leaves in an hour, Mom said. But I don't want to go, I told them, jumping up from the couch. I want to stay in Cairo and see Uncle Ben. I want to go to the pyramids with him. You promised. We argued about it for a short while. They tried to convince me that there were a lot of cool things to see in Alexandria, but I held my ground. Finally, Mom had an idea. She went into the bedroom, and I heard her making a phone call to someone. A few minutes later, she came back with a smile on her face. I talked to Uncle Ben, she announced. Well, do they have phones in the pyramid? I asked. <laughs> Sorry, Kelly got to a part in that book that's infuriating. Ah. Is it the boob software part? Uh, no, it's the fake um, foundation for helping oh, right. like female filmmakers what that's book? just a tax shelter um what's it called mr penumbra's 24-hour bookstore if you would like to borrow it you can keep mine <laughs> <laughs> i I'm, bought it so i'm oh my god i'm okay. a little bummed we didn't get to talk about it on we'll have to talk about I, it next time i ranted about it too much this past weekend i know and but today I, yeah um i still think it's funny yeah it's the first book in the book club that we're doing and I did not enjoy it. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't know where we are. Right here. Okay. No, I talked to him at the small lodge he's staying at in Al Jizza, she replied. He said he'd take class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that too. Yeah, seriously. Like, he... you want track with two chains? <laughs> He said he'd come and take care of you if you want, while your dad and I are in Alexandria. Yeah? This was starting to sound outstanding again. I just learned the word outstanding recently, so I'm going to use it all the time. Could I be any more excited? <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Ben is one of the coolest guys I've ever known. Sometimes I couldn't believe he was mom's brother. It's your choice, Gabe, she said, glancing at my dad. You can come with us or you can stay with Ben till we get back. Some choice. I didn't have to think about it for more than one eighteenth of a second. I'll stay with Uncle Ben, I declared. One other thing, Mom said, grinning for some reason. You might want to think about this. I don't care what it is, I insisted. I choose Uncle Ben <laughs> over my parents. <laughs> Sorry is also on Christmas vacation, Mom said, and she's staying with him too. Barf, I cried, and flung myself down on the couch and began pounding the cushions with both this. Sorry is Uncle Ben's stuck-up daughter. My only cousin. She's the same age as me. Twelve, like I already fucking mentioned. And she thinks she's so great. She goes to boarding school in the United States while her dad works in Egypt. She thinks she's so great. Nothing I would know about. I, I have <laughs> yeah. seen this episode, by the way. Oh, you have? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's okay. awesome. I bet by the end of it, they're best friends. <clears throat> she's really pretty, and she knows it. And Ew. she's smart. And the last time I saw her, she was an inch taller than me. This is riveting information. Ew, and it's his cousin. Don't be afraid to ride your cousin. Hard. That was last Christmas, <laughs> I guess. She thought she was really hot stuff because she could get to the last level of Super Mario Land. You think it's but it special, wasn't fair. You went to a dance. dance. <laughs> Sorry, go on. <laughs> but it wasn't fair because I don't have Super Nintendo, only regular Nintendo, so I never get to practice. This is awful. I think that's what she liked about me best, that she could beat me at games and things. Sari is the most competitive person I know. She has to be first and best at everything. If everyone around is catching the flu, she has to be the first one to catch it. The flu? No, yeah. that doesn't... No. 
Stop pounding the couch like that, Mom said. She grabbed my arm and pulled me to my feet. Does that mean, oh, uh, uh, does that mean you changed your mind? You're coming with us? <laughs> Dad asked. <sighs> I thought about it. No, I'll stay here with Uncle Ben. He makes the best rice, I decided. <laughs> 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 And you won't fight with Sari, Mom asked. She fights with me. I was just thinking, oh, maybe he makes really good jasmine rice. Yeah. Your mom and I have got to hurry, Dad said. (laughs) They disappeared into the bedroom to pack, quote unquote. (laughs) I turned on the TV and watched some kind of game show in Arabic. I had to turn the volume up really loud. (laughs) The contestants kept laughing a lot. I couldn't figure out why. I hardly know a word of Arabic. After a while, Mom and Dad came out again, (laughs) dragging suitcases and their hair was messed up. (laughs) They came all right. We'll never get. <laughs> <laughs> we'll never get to the airport in time, Dad said. I talked to Ben. Mom told me, brushing her hair with her hand. He'll be here in an hour, hour and a half. Gabe, don't you mind staying here for just an hour? You don't mind, do you? Huh? Not much of an answer, I'll admit. But, <laughs> but her question caught me by surprise. This kid's very self-aware. I mean, it never occurred to me that my own parents would leave me all alone in a big hotel in a strange city where I don't even fucking know the language. Who are they, the McAllisters? <laughs> <laughs> don't steal my scene. <laughs> I mean, how could they do that to me? No problem, I said, and lied. I'll be fine. I'll just watch TV till he comes. Ben's on his way already, Mom said. Ah! Wait, Chris. Oh hey. my God, it's bats! <laughs> Say that again. What, say what again? The thing you just said. Oh. <laughs> Who are they? The McAllisters? <laughs> oh, man. You figure you should always be hovering over I, that. No, thing. I know. Every time every time someone says a joke, I'm like, hang on. <laughs> say it again. Say it again. <laughs> say it again. <laughs> he and Sari will be here in no time. And I phoned down to the hotel manager. He said he'd have someone to look out for you at from time to time. Where's the bellhop, Dad asked, nervously pacing around the door and back. I called down there 10 minutes ago. Just stay here and wait for Ben, okay? Mom said to me, walking walking up from behind the couch, leaning over and squeezing my ears. Ew. For, <laughs> for some reason, she thinks I like that. <laughs> Ow, I said. <laughs> Fuck off, Mom, I said. Um, don't go out or anything. Just wait right here for him. She bent down and kissed me on the forehead. I won't move, I promise. I'll stay right here on the couch. <laughs> I won't go to the bathroom or anything. Jeez. Fucking smart ass. <coughs> Can you ever be serious? Mom asked, shaking her head. <laughs> There's a loud knock on the door. The bellhop, a bent over old man with one arm, who didn't look as if he could pick up a feather pillow, had arrived to take the bags. Mom and Dad, looking very worried, gave me hugs and more final instructions and told me once again to stay in the room. The door closed behind them, and it was suddenly very quiet. Except for all those monster noises. (laughs) Very quiet. I turned up the TV just to make it a little noisier. The game show had gone off, and now a man in a white suit was reading the news in Arabic. I'm not scared, I said aloud, but I had kind of a tight feeling in my throat. Maybe I was thirsty again. I walked to the window and looked out. The sun was nearly down. The shadow of the skyscraper slanted over the street and onto the hotel. I picked up my Coke glass and took a sip. It was watery and flat. My stomach growled. I suddenly realized I was hungry. (laughs) Room service, I thought. Then I decided I'd better not. What if I called and they only spoke Arabic? I glanced at the clock. 7.20. I wished Uncle Ben would arrive. He just (laughs) could. I wasn't scared. I just wished he'd arrive. Okay, maybe I was a little nervous. Also, didn't you just say you're scared? Oh, you said you weren't scared. You said he wasn't scared. You're a liar. He lied. I paced back and forth for a bit. I tried playing Tetris on the Game Boy, but I couldn't concentrate, and the light wasn't very good. But it's Tetris! (laughs) Also, this kid 100% has ADD. Yeah. Like, fucking play your Game Boy. Time will fly oh past God, you. Seriously. Sorry is probably a champ at Tetris, I thought bitterly. Where were they? What was taking so long? I began to have horrible, frightening thoughts. What if they can't find the hotel? What if they get mixed up and go to the wrong hotel? 
What if they're in a terrible car crash and die? And I'm all by myself in Cairo for days and days. That sounds exciting. Know, yeah. You're like 12 years old in Cairo by yourself? That sounds like you can get into some shenanigans. Yeah, definitely. Like some Indiana like, Jones style shenanigans. Yeah. Kind of shenanigans. Yeah. Like go down to the oh. market, hide in the Those basket. Camels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't eat the dates. Bad dates. I know, they were dumb thoughts, but they're the kind of thoughts you have when you're alone in a strange place waiting for someone to come. I glanced down and realized I had taken the mummy hand out of my jeans pocket. Uh, Wait, what? Um, Did I miss that? Okay, hand? hold on. We're going into an explanation. Right, okay. I just yeah, figured I, I had zoned out and, and missed a mummy hand. I pulled the dildo out of my pants. Yeah. Oh, oh, <laughs> I forgot. It's just written bad. Yep. <laughs> okay, mummy hand. Pulled the mummy hand out of my jeans pocket. It was small, <laughs> the size of a child's hand. A little hand wrapped in papery brown gauze. I had bought it at a garage sale a few years ago, and I always carried it around as a good luck charm. Normal. Yeah. The kid who sold it to me called it a summoner. This took a turn. He, when he I said it, he laughed and disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> this just sounds like a serial killer walking around with a fucking child's hand in his pocket. Yeah. He's like, he's like, <laughs> <laughs> With my raspy like, <laughs> <laughs> For real. He said it was used to summon evil spirits or something. I didn't care about that. I just I was really thirsty at the time. So, you know, I can't focus. <laughs> I just thought it was an outstanding bargain for $2. Oh I mean, what a great thing to find at a garage sale. And maybe it was even real. I tossed it from hand to hand as I paced the length of the living room. The TV was starting to make me nervous, so I clicked it off. This kid has anxiety issues and ADD. But now the quiet was making me nervous. I slapped the mummy hand against my palm and kept pacing, wondering what else could I do with it. High five the I mummy was hand. alone. I could think of a few things. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> and I was just very recently discovering myself, growing <laughs> hair in funny places, and noticing weird things about my cousin. <laughs> Where were yeah, they? Don't they think should we're have not been here by now. That. <laughs> I was beginning to think that I had made the wrong choice. Maybe I should have gone to Alexandria with mom and dad. I heard they had a great library. Then I heard a noise at the door. Footsteps. Was it them? I stopped in the middle of the living room and listened, staring past the narrow front hallway to the door. The light was dim in the hallway, but I saw the doorknob turn. That's strange, I thought. Uncle Ben would knock first, wouldn't he? It couldn't possibly be one of the hotel workers that I was told was going to check up on me. The doorknob turned. The door started to creak open. Hey! I he called out. He didn't fucking lock it? But the word choked in my throat. <laughs> Uncle Ben would knock. He wouldn't just barge in. He's family. <laughs> I'm 12. What if I'm masturbating? <laughs> With my mommy hand. <laughs> slowly, slowly, the door squeaked open as I stared, frozen in the middle of the room, unable to call out. Standing in the doorway was a tall, shadowy figure. I gasped as the figure lurched into the room, and I saw it clearly. Even in the dim light, I could see what it was. My mom. No, a mummy. <laughs> Glaring at me with round, dark eyes through holes in its ancient, thick bandages. A mummy. <laughs> Pushing itself off the wall and staggering stiffly toward me into it's the just living room. It's drug uncle. It's, ar <laughs> its arms out, stretched as if to grab me. I opened my mouth to scream, but no sound came out, which is typical in a dream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Chapter three. I took a step back and then another. Without realizing it, I'd raised my... <laughs> My little mummy hand in the air, <laughs> as if trying to fend off the intruder with it. Well, we're gonna masturbate with this, I swear. <laughs> Is this yours? Um, as the mummy staggered oh into God. the light, I stared into its deep, dark eyes until I recognized them. Uncle Ben! I screamed. Angrily, I heaved the mummy hand at him. It hit his bandaged chest and bounced off. He collapsed backwards against the wall, laughing that booming laugh of his. It was him. Yeah. And then I saw Sari. I've read enough of these by now. Poking her stupid fucking head into the doorway. <laughs> she was laughing too. A bitch. <laughs> they both thought it was hilarious. But my heart was pounding so hard I thought I was going to pop out of my chest. That wasn't funny! I shouted angrily, bawling my hands into fists at my sides. I took a deep breath, and then another, 
trying to get my breathing to return to normal. <clears throat> I started having a panic attack. <laughs> <laughs> I told you he'd be scared. Sorry, said, walking into the room. <laughs> you know that's a girl's name. Yeah. 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 A, big, girl, girl a big superior grin on her face. Uncle Ben was laughing so hard he had tears running down his bandaged face. He was a big man, tall and broad, and his laughter shook the room. And ah, ah, ah. Davies. <laughs> Yay. Oh, my God. <laughs> you weren't that scared, were you, Gabe? I knew it was you. I said, my heart still pounding, as if there were it were it were it, as, as if it were a what? Uh, <laughs> my heart oh still pounding, as if it were a wind-up toy someone had wound up too tight. <laughs> I recognized you right away. You sure looked scared. Sorry, insisted. <laughs> I didn't want to spoil the joke. I replied, wondering if they could see how terrified I really was. All the pee in my pants. <laughs> you should have seen the look on your face, Uncle Ben cried and started laughing all over again. The room shook, the walls cracked. I told Daddy he shouldn't do it, sorry said, <laughs> dropping down onto the couch. I'm amazed that hotel people let him come out dressed like that. Uncle Ben bent down and picked up the mummy hand I had tossed at him. And he went, ew. <laughs> You're used to me and my impractical jokes, right, Gabe? Yeah. I said, avoiding his eyes. Secretly, I scolded myself for falling for his stupid costume. I was always falling for his dumb fucking jokes. Always. Ah, oh, now they were sorry, grinning at me from the couch, knowing I was so scared that I practically had a cow. Jesus. God, I hate her. <laughs> She's the best voice, though. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Ben pulled some of the bandages away from his face. He stepped over and handed the little mummy hand back to me. <laughs> Where do you get that, he asked garage sale i told him i started to ask him if it was real but he surrounded me in a big bear hug the gauze felt rough against my cheek <laughs> good to see you gabe he said softly you've grown taller i feel like these books are getting more erotic definitely mm -hmm. good to see you well they grew up with their audience yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh, almost as tall as me sorry chimed in uncle ben motioned to her Get up and help me pull this stuff off. I kind of like the way you look in it. Sorry, said. What is happening? Oh, my God. Get um, over here, Ben insisted. <laughs> Jesus Come Christ. over here, kids. Help your uncle disrobe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry got up with a sigh, tossing her straight black hair behind her shoulders. She walked over to her dad and started unraveling the bandages. Got a little carried away with this mummy thing, Gabe. Uncle Ben admitted, resting his arm on my shoulder as Sari continued working. Take your own fucking bandages off. But it's just because I'm so excited about what's going on at the pyramid. What's going on, I asked eagerly. Daddy's discovered a whole new burial chamber, Sari broke in before her dad even had a chance to tell me himself. What a He's bitch. exploring parts of the pyramid that have been undiscovered for thousands of years. Really? I cried. That's outstanding. Drink oh. every time, he says, outstanding. I don't want to die. <laughs> Uncle Ben chuckled. Wait till you see it. See it? I wasn't sure what he meant. You mean you're going to take me into the pyramid? My voice was so high that only dogs could hear it. <laughs> but this, I didn't come up with that. Oh my God. But I didn't care. I couldn't believe my good luck. No one talks like this. I was actually going inside the Great Pyramid into a section that hadn't been discovered until now. I have no choice. Uncle Ben said dryly. <laughs> what else am I going to do with you two? Is that your John Reese davies <laughs> Yeah, I like it. <laughs> Indy! <laughs> are th <laughs> Indy! Are there mummies in there, I asked? Will we see actual mummies? <laughs> do you miss your mummy? <laughs> Sorry, I said her lame idea of a joke. I ignored her. That's Is there treasure down burn, there, Uncle sorry. Ben? Yeah. Egyptian relics? Are there wall paintings? Let's talk about it at dinner! He said, tucking <laughs> off the last of the bandages. He was wearing a plaid sport shirt and baggy chinos under all the gauze, it's and a, a fez shirt. on the top of his head. <laughs> he was wearing a fez? No. Oh, God. <laughs> Sala wore a fez. <laughs> yeah, I'm just picturing Sala in the white suit. Come on, I'm starving! <laughs> Race you downstairs! Sorry, said, and shoved me out of the way to give herself a good head start out of the room. 
We ate downstairs in the hotel restaurant. There were palm trees painted on the walls and miniature palm trees planted in big pots all around the restaurant because that's important to the story. Large wooden ceiling fans whirled slowly overhead to genuinely paint a picture of what a restaurant in Egypt looks like. <laughs> the three of us I feel sat- like I'm there. <laughs> the three of us sat in the large booth. Sorry and I across from Uncle Ben. Eating chilled monkey's brains. <laughs> a delicacy. It's almost like he gets paid by the word. <laughs> <laughs> we studied the long menus. They were printed in Arabic and English. On papyrus. Because <laughs> it's Egypt. <laughs> Listen to this game. I can't do this. <laughs> I wanted it because it's so That's funny. Great. <laughs> it's not happening. I tried. Uh, start off with a, yeah, see? Yeah, yeah, see? Yeah, see? Listen to this game. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, he said. A, sm- <laughs> a smug smile on her face. She began to read the Arabic words aloud. I'm going to show off. <laughs> the white suited waiter. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. The white suited waiter brought a basket of flat pita bread and a bowl of green stuff to dip the bread in. I ordered a club sandwich and French fries because I'm American as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, ordered a hamburger because she was equally as uncultured as I am. <laughs> Later, as we ate our dinner, Uncle Ben explained a little bit more about what he had discovered in the pyramids. As you probably know, he started tearing off a chunk of the flatbread. The pyramid was built sometime around 2500 BC during the reign of the pharaoh. Oh, shit. Khufu. Khufu. <laughs> you want to try that one? Khufu. Khufu. Oh, Gazuntite. <laughs> That's a real word that I should know. <laughs> Gazuntite. <laughs> Sorry, said another lame joke. Her father chuckled. I made a face at her. Duh. It was the biggest structure of his time, Uncle Ben said. Do you know how wide the base of the pyramid is? Sari shook her head. No, how wide? She asked with a mouthful of hamburger, the disgusting bitch. <laughs> I know, I said, grinning. It's 13 acres wide. Hey, that's right, Uncle Ben exclaimed, obviously impressed. Sari flashed me a surprised look. That's only one for that me. <laughs> <laughs> that's one for me, I thought, happily sticking my tongue out at her like an infant. God, I hate this kid. Oh my God. <laughs> He's one of the most um, insufferable kids so far. Oh, yeah, he's definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've seen some pretty bad kids. This is a bad one. That's one for me, and one for my dad's guidebooks. <laughs> the pyramid was built as a royal burial place. Uncle Ben continued, his expression turning serious. The pharaoh made it really enormous so that the burial chamber could be hidden. The Egyptians worried about tomb robbers and raiders. They knew that people would try and break in and take all the valuable jewels and treasures, so they buried that they buried alongside their owners. That Laura Croft is a tricky wicket. <laughs> so they built dozens of tunnels and chambers inside a confusing maze to keep robbers from finding the real burial room. Pass the ketchup, please. Sorry, interrupted. <laughs> I passed the ketchup. Sorry's heard all of this before, Uncle Ben said, <laughs> dipping the pita bread into the dark gravy on his plate. Yeah, when did gravy come into play, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> huh? <laughs> anyway, we archaeologists thought we'd uncovered all of the tunnels and rooms inside this pyramid. But a few days ago, my workers and I discovered a tunnel that isn't on any of the charts. An unexplored, undiscovered tunnel. And we think that this tunnel may lead us to the actual burial chamber of Khufu himself. Outstanding. <laughs> Out fucking standing, I exclaimed. And sorry, and I will be there when you discover it. This Un- got a catchphrase. Uncle, ben, Uncle ben chuckled. <laughs> I don't know about that, Gabe. It may take us years of careful exploration, but I'll take you down into the tunnel tomorrow. Then you can tell your friends you are actually inside the ancient pyramid of Khufu. I've already been in it. Sorry, Briggs. <laughs> she turned her eyes to me. It's very dark. You might get scared. No, I won't. I insisted. No way. The three of us spent the night at my parents' hotel room. It took me hours to get to sleep. I guess I was excited about going to the pyramid. I kept imagining that we found mummies and big chests and ancient jewels and treasure. 
Uncle Ben woke us up early the next morning, and we drove out to the pyramid outside Al Jaza. The air was already hot and sticky. The sun seemed... What? Nothing. Oh. You made a mouth sound. Well, Chris is making a funny face, oh. or I don't know. He might just be zoning out. <laughs> I'm <laughs> listening. <laughs> I, I, lo- I, I looked out at this, and I looked up, and Chris was just doing this to me. <laughs> <laughs> For the listeners, Jonathan made a funny face. <laughs> the sun seemed to hang low over the desert like an orange balloon. Very poetic. <laughs> there it is, sorry declared, pointing out the window. And I saw the Great Pyramid rising up from the yellow sand like some kind of mirage. Uncle Ben showed a special a permit. mirage, it's there. <laughs> Sorry. Like a mirage. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uncle Ben. <laughs> this page is boring. Oh, you got a Becca page. <laughs> got a Becca page. It's just all boring exposition. The lanterns on the wall were lanterns. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, just you wait. <laughs> Uncle Ben showed a special permit to the blue uniformed guard, oh and we God. followed a narrow private road that curved through the sand behind the pyramid. We parked beside several other cars and vans in the blue gray shadow of the pyramid. As I stepped out of the car, my chest was thudding with excitement. I stared up at the enormous worn stones of the Great Pyramid. It's over 4,000 years old, I thought. I'm about to go inside something that was built 4,000 years ago. Your sneakers untied, Sari said, pointing. <clears throat> she sure knew how to bring a guy back down to earth. <laughs> Cunt. <laughs> what are you, a nard? No, no, nard. <laughs> nard? <laughs> Just go on. I bet the sand to tie my sneaker. For some reason, the left one was always coming untied, even when I double knotted it. And I do hope that is important to the story later on. <laughs> you know not, he's going to trip with that. Yeah. Because if not, Mom's fuck you, get him. <laughs> For making me read that. <laughs> My workers are already inside, Uncle Ben told us. Now stick close together, okay? Don't wander off. The tunnels really are like a maze. It's very easy to get lost. No problem, I said, my trembling voice revealing how nervous and excited I was. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll keep an eye on game, Dad. <laughs> Sorry, said. She was only two months older than me. Why did she have to act like she was my babysitter or something? Uncle Ben handed us both flashlights. Clip them onto your jeans as we go in, he instructed. He gazed at me. You don't believe in curses, do you? You know, the ancient Egyptian kind? It says that for real. (laughs) I didn't know how to reply, so I shook my head. heard of Italian curses. (laughs) Good, Uncle Ben replied, grinning. (laughs) Because one of my workers claims we violated an ancient decree by entering this tunnel and that we've activated some curse. We're not scared, Sorry said, giving him a playful shove toward the entrance. Get going, Dad! And seconds later, we were stepping into the small square opening cut into the stone. Stooping low, I followed them through a narrow tunnel that seemed to slope gradually down. I hate it when one word starts on the... Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. And it's like the longest sentence in the book. Yeah. Usually only four words long. <laughs> Uncle Ben led the way, lighting the ground with a bright halogen flashlight. The pyramid floor was soft and sandy. The air was cool and damp. Bless you. you. Are you allergic to it? Are yes. you okay? I'm allergic to sand. Cool and damp. <laughs> sand allergy. <laughs> I hate the beach. <laughs> Shut up. The walls are granite, Uncle Ben Uncle Ben said, stopping to rub a hand along the low ceiling. All of the tunnels were made of limestone. The temperature dropped suddenly. The air felt even wetter. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) I suddenly realized why Uncle Ben had made us wear our sweatshirts. If you're scared... (laughs) I can't do the voice. If you're you're scared, we can go back, Sorry said. I'm fine, I replied quickly. The tunnel ended abruptly. A pale yellow wall rose up in front of us. Ben's flashlight darted over a small, dark hole in the floor. (laughs) Giggity. Down we go, Ben said, groaning as he dropped to his knees. Oh, oh no! I made it worse. He turned back to me, afraid there are no stairs down to the new tunnel. My workers installed a rope ladder. Just take your time on it. Take it slowly, one rung at a time, just the tip, just to see what it feels like, and you'll be fine. No problem, I said, but my voice cracked. Don't look down, sorry advised. 
It might make you dizzy and you'll fall. <laughs> Thanks for the encouragement, bitch, I told her. I pushed my way past her. I'll go down first, I said. Pushed her in the hole. <laughs> I pushed her right in that fucking hole. I, I was already tired of her acting so superior. I asked to show her who was brave and who... I decided to show her who was brave and who wasn't. Oh, shit. <laughs> no, let me go first, Uncle Ben said, raising a hand to stop me. Then I'll shine the light up and the ladder and help you down. With another groan, he maneuvered himself into the hole. Oh, he was so big, he nearly didn't fit. Yeah, I, wonder, I was just going to say, he'd be fat like Dad. Probably. <laughs> Slowly, he began to lower himself down the rope ladder. Sorry and I leaned over the hole and peered down, watching him descend. The rope ladder wasn't very steady because it was rope. It swung back and forth under his weight, and he slowly, carefully made his way down. It's a long way down, I said softly. <laughs> Sorry didn't reply. In the shadowy light, I could see her worried expression. She was chewing on her lower lips at, uh, and her dad, as her dad reached the tunnel floor. <laughs> she was nervous, too. That cheered me up a lot, because I wanted her to be unhappy. <laughs> okay, I'm down. You're next, Gabe. Uncle Ben called up to me. I turned and swung my feet onto the rope ladder. I grinned at sorry. See ya. I lowered my hands to the sides of the rope ladder, and as I slid them down. I cried out, ow! The rope wasn't smooth. It was coarse. <laughs> it cut my hands. Oh my, God. my little porcelain hands. <laughs> <laughs> the sharp stab of pain made me lift my hands. And before I even realized what was happening, I started to fall. Dumbass, kid! So chapter four. Two hands reached down for mine. They shot through the air and grabbed my wrists. Hold on! Sorry cried. She had slowed my fall just enough to allow me to grab back onto the sides of the rope ladder. Oh, wow! I managed to utter. That was the best I could do. I gripped the rope for dear life, waiting for my little heart to stop pounding. I closed my eyes and didn't move. I squeezed the rope so hard, my hands ached. Saved your life! Sorry called down to me, <laughs> leaning into the opening, her face inches from mine, so close I could kiss them. Her lips. I opened my <laughs> eyes and stared up at her. Thanks, I said gratefully. Uh, nope, just like kissing hands. No problem, she replied and burst out laughing. <laughs> laughing, <laughs> laughing from relief, I guess. Why couldn't I save her life? I asked myself angrily. Why couldn't I ever be the big fucking hero? Why can't she save herself? <laughs> what happened, Gabe? Uncle Ben called from the tunnel floor below. His booming voice echoed loudly through the chamber. <clears throat> Bo booming, echoing voice. Booming, booming echoing voice. voice. The wide circle of light from his flashlight danced across the granite wall. The rope cut my hands, I explained. I wasn't expecting. Just take your time, he said patiently. One rung at a time, remember? Lower your hands. Don't slide them. Sorry advised, her yeah. face poking through the hole above me. Slow. Okay, okay, I said, starting to breathe normally. I took a deep breath and held it. Then slowly, carefully, I made my way down the long rope ladder. A short while later, all three of us were standing on the tunnel floor, holding our lighted flashlights, our eyes following the circles of lights. This way, Uncle Ben said quietly, and he headed off to the right, walking slowly, stooping because of the low ceiling. Our sneakers crunched on the sandy floor. I saw another tunnel leading off to the right, then another tunnel on the left. We're breathing air. Place is lousy with tunnels. <laughs> so many tunnels. <laughs> We're breathing air that is 4,000 years old, Ben said, no. keeping his light aimed on the floor ahead of him. Because all other air is brand fucking new. <laughs> Smells like it, I whispered to Sari. She laughed. <laughs> the air did smell old. Kind of heavy and musty, like someone's attic. Ha! <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, I can't swallow Jesus for some Christ. reason. I feel like this is a little louder. Is it than too loud? Normal. It's pretty loud. I, I, it's I, distracting me. It's a <laughs> <laughs> I made it so loud because I could like barely hear it last time. <laughs> the tunnel widened a little as it curved to the right. <laughs> Just like my dick. We're going <laughs> deeper into the earth. Uh, I already changed Uncle yeah, Ben's voice it. to... Uh, now you're Ian McKellen. Yeah, now he's Ian McKellen. <laughs> ben said, 
Does it feel like you're going downhill? No, it's too slow. <laughs> Does it feel like you're going downhill? Better. Sorry, and I both muttered that it did. Yes, it did. <laughs> Dad and I explored one of the side tunnels yesterday. Sorry, told me. We found a mummy cave inside of a... <laughs> We found a mummy case inside of a tiny room. A beautiful one in perfect condition. A mummy case? Was there a mummy inside it? I asked eagerly. I was dying to see a mummy. The museum dying. back home had only one. I stared at it and studied it all my life. No, it was empty, I say. Sorry, I replied. Why didn't the mummy have any hobbies? Uncle Ben asked, stopping suddenly. Hobbies? I don't know, I answered. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on. Let me figure this one out. It's a joke. All right. So why didn't the mummy was, have any hobbies? Why didn't the mummy have any He was all tied up? Hobbies? Is that it? It's close. Oh, he was all wrapped up? Oh, in, in that, that, yep. Let it happen. Sorry. <laughs> he was too wrapped up in his work. Ah, Uncle Ben exclaimed. Good one. Good he, one. He laughed Solid at his own Uncle joke. Ben. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Chris Sorry, is so, proud of himself. Sorry, and I can only muster weak smiles. Weak smile. <laughs> Don't encourage him. Sorry, told me loud enough for her dad to hear. He knows a million mommy jokes, and they're all just as bad. I want to hear all of them, every single one in this book. <laughs> Wait up, just a sec. I said. I bent down to tie my sneaker, which had come undone again. Oh, foreshadowing. Good story. <laughs> the tunnel curved, then divided into two tunnels. Just like uh, my dick. <laughs> Sorry. Ew. Uncle Ben led us through one uh, through the one to the left, which was so narrow we had to squeeze through it, making our way sideways, like John's dick. Heads bent until it widened into a large high ceiling chamber. Like John's dick. Oh boy, you guys, it's a nightmare down there. It's weird if you say it. <laughs> um <clears throat> I stood up straight and stretched. It felt so good not to be scrunched down. I stared around the large room. Several people came into view at the far wall, working with digging tools. You might call them shovels. Bright spotlights had been hung above digging them. Digging tools? Digging tools. Digging tools. <laughs> On the wall. Attached to a portable generator. Uncle Ben brought us over to them and introduced us. There were four workers, two men, and two women. How uh, progressive. Another man stood off to one side, a clipboard in his hand. He was an Egyptian, dressed in all white except for a red bandana around his neck. He well, had that makes it uneven. One more man than women. Yeah, now it's not progressive. He had straight black hair, slicked down and tied in a ponytail behind his head. He stared at Sari and me, but didn't come over. He seemed to be studying us. And every time he made a gesture, a jaguar called. What? Rah, rah. <laughs> <laughs> Ahmed. I'm Ahmed. Uh, Ahmed, you met my daughter yesterday. This is Gabe, my nephew. My nephew! <laughs> Uncle Ben called to him. Ahmed nodded, but didn't smile or say anything. Ahmed is from the university, Uncle Ben explained to me in a low voice. He requested permission <laughs> to observe us, and I said okay. He's very quiet, but don't get him started on ancient curses. <clears throat> He's the one who keeps warning me that I am in deadly danger. Ahmed nodded, but didn't reply. He stared at me for a while. Weird guy, I thought. Yes, curses. Curses. He's like, yeah, you're cursed. I wondered if he'd tell me about the ancient curses. I love stories about ancient curses. Uncle Ben turned to his workers. So, any progress today, he asked. We think we're getting real close, a young, red-haired man wearing faded jeans and a blue denim work shirt replied. Then he added, just a hunch. <laughs> ben frowned. Thanks, Quasimodo, he said. The workers all laughed. Oh my god. I guess they liked Uncle Ben's jokes. I love this guy. <laughs> Quasi I want to hear a thousand of these. <laughs> Quasimodo Thanks, was the hunchback of Notre Dame, sorry, explained to me in her superior tone. I know, I replied irritably. I get it. Ah, oh, God, these kids. What, mm, they cut the sexual what? tension with a knife. <laughs> we could be heading in the wrong direction altogether, Uncle Ben told the workers, scratching the bald spot on the back of his head. The tunnel might be o over there, he pointed to the wall on the right. <laughs> No, I think we're getting warm, Ben. A young woman, her face smudged with dust, said, Come over here. I want to show you something. Yeah. I'm getting warm. Fuck yeah. 
She led him over to a large pile of stones and debris. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> he Stick shined his, in there. He shined his light where she was pointing. Oh. Then he leaned to examine what she was showing him. Yeah. That's very interesting, Christy, Uncle Ben said, rubbing his chin. <laughs> they fell into a long discussion. <laughs> After a while, three other workers entered the chamber carrying shovels and picks. <clears throat> shovels and picks. One of them was carrying some kind of electronic equipment in a flat metal case. It looked a little like a laptop computer. I wanted to ask Uncle Ben what it was, but he was still in the corner, involved in his discussion with the worker named Christy, who had a very large chest. Sari and I wandered back toward the tunnel entrance. I think he's forgotten about us, Sari said sullenly. I agreed, shining my flashlight up at the high, uh, cracked ceiling. <clears throat> Once he gets down here with the workers, he forgets everything about but his work, she said, sighing. Sigh. <laughs> I can't believe we're actually inside a pyramid, I exclaimed. Sorry laughed. She kicked at the floor <laughs> with one sneaker. <laughs> Look, ancient dirt, she said. Yeah, I kicked up some of the sandy dirt, too. I wonder who walked here last. Maybe an Egyptian priestess. Maybe a pharaoh. They might have stood right here on this spot. Let's go exploring, Sorry said suddenly. Huh? Her dark eyes gleamed, and she had a really devilish look on her face. Let's go, Gaby. Let's check out some tunnels or something. <laughs> Don't call me Gaby, I said. Come on, sorry. You know I hate that. Gee, I bet that's why she said it. <laughs> oh, <goo>. <clears throat> sorry, she apologized. <laughs> Giggling. That's her name. <laughs> uh, you coming? We can't, I insisted, watching Uncle Ben. He was having some kind of argument with the worker carrying the thing that looked like a laptop. No, I have the bigger breasts. <laughs> Your dad said st we had to stick together. <laughs> he said, he'll be busy for, you for a few hours, she interrupted, glancing back at him. He won't even notice we're gone, really. <laughs> Stupid kids. But sorry, I started. Besides, she continued, putting her hands on my shoulders and pushing me backward toward the chamber door. He doesn't want us hanging around. We'll only get in the way. Sorry. I went exploring. I went exploring yesterday, she said, pushing me with both hands. We won't go far. You can't get lost. All the tunnels lead back to this big room. Really, believe me. You've got to believe me. I just don't think we should, I said, my eyes on Uncle Ben. He was down on his hands and knees now, digging against the wall like a dog with some kind of a pick. Let go of me, I told her. Really, I... And then she said what I knew she'd say. What she always says when she wants to get her way. Are you chicken? No, I insisted. You know your dad said, chicken, chicken, chicken? She began clucking like a chicken. <laughs> really obnoxious. <laughs> a cool doodle doo. Oh, oh wait, wrong way. Jesus, <laughs> man. Get the order right. Stop it, sorry. I tried to sound tough and menacing. Ugh, good job. Are you chicken, Gaby? She repeated, grinning at me as if she'd won some big victory. Huh, Gaby? Stop calling me that, I insisted. She just stared at me. I made a disgusted face. Yeah. Okay, okay, let's go exploring, I told her. I mean, what else could I say? You could say no. Yeah. But not far, I added. Don't worry, she said, grinning. We won't get lost. I'll just show you some of the tunnels I looked at yesterday. One of them has a strange animal picture carved on the wall. I think it's some kind of cat. I'm not <laughs> sure. Really? I cried, instantly excited. I've never, or uh, bleh, I've seen pictures of relief carvings, but I've never. It may be a cat, Sari said, or a person with an animal head. It's really weird. Aren't you Egyptian? Whoa. Don't you know about this shit? Where is it? I asked. Follow me. We both gave one last glance back to Uncle Ben, who was down on his hands and knees, picking away at the stone wall. Then I followed so Sari out of the chamber. We squeezed through the narrow tunnel, then turned and followed a slightly wider tunnel to the right. I hesitated a few steps behind her. Are you sure we'll be able to get back, I asked, keeping my voice low so she couldn't accuse me of sounding frightened. <laughs> because my masculinity was fragile. Paper thin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no problem, she replied. Keep your light on the floor. There's a small chamber on the other end of this tunnel. That's kind of neat. We followed the tunnel as it curved to the right. It branched into two low openings, and Sari took the one to the left. The air grew a little warmer. It smelled stale, as if people had been smoking cigarettes there. 
This tunnel was wider than the others. Sorry was walking faster now, getting farther ahead of me. Hey, wait up, I cried. I looked down to see that my sneaker had come untied again. Oh my Uttering God. a loud, annoyed groan, I bent to retie it. <laughs> uh, hey, sorry, wait up. She didn't seem to hear me. I could see her light in the distance, growing fainter in the tunnel. Why are you so slow? Then it suddenly disappeared. Had her flashlight burned out? No. The tunnel probably curved, I decided. She's just out of my view. Hey, sorry, I called. Wait up. Wait up. I stared ahead into the dark tunnel. Sorry? Why didn't she answer me? Oh, my God. Chapter 5. <laughs> sorry? Meanwhile, at the pyramids of Giza. <laughs> my voice echoed through the long, curving tunnel. Sorry? 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 No reply. I called again and listened to my voice fading as the echo repeated her name again and again. 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 At okay. first, I was angry. I knew what Sari was doing. She was deliberately not answering, deliberately, deliberately trying to frighten me, the bitch. She, she had, had to bitch. prove that she was the brave one. She had to prove and I, Oh my god. And I was the Freddy cat. I suddenly remembered another time, a few years before, Sari and Uncle Ben had come to my house for a visit. I think Sari and I were seven or eight. We, we went outside to play. It was a gray day, threatening rain. Sorry had a jump rope and was showing off, as usual, showing me how good she was at it. Then, of course, when she let me try... It. it I it. tripped and fell and she laughed like crazy. Crazy. <clears throat> that doesn't really seem like she set you up for failure. It seems yeah. like you're bad at jumping rope. Yeah. <laughs> I decided to get back at her by taking her to this deserted old house a couple blocks up the street. Oh, that's... <laughs> ah! I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> What were you going to say? I'm just saying this sounds like uh, not the same amount of getting nope. back. Yeah. <clears throat> when I found an old camera in the basement. There was oh, an old no. hobo and I shoved her in the room and locked the door. <laughs> but the kids in the neighborhood all believed the house was haunted. It was a neat place to sneak in and explore, although our parents were always warning us to stay away from it because it was falling apart and dangerous. So I led Sari to this house and told her it was haunted and we sneaked in through the broken basement window. It got even darker out and started to rain. It was perfect. I could tell Sari was really scared to be alone in the creepy old house. I, of course, wasn't scared at all because I'd been there before. Well, we started exploring with me leading the way, and somehow we got separated, and it was, and it started thundering and lightning outside. There was rain pouring in through the broken windows. I decided maybe we should go home, so I called to Sari. No answer. I called again. Still no answer. Then I heard a loud crash. Calling her name, I started running from room to room. I was scared to death. I was sure something terrible had happened. I ran through every room of the house, getting more and more scared. I couldn't find her. I shouted and shouted, but she didn't answer me. I was so scared, I started to cry. Then I totally panicked, and I ran out of the house and into the pouring rain. I can't wait to hear how this ends. This oh, kid's man. so dumb. He's an idiot. <clears throat> I ran through the thunder and lightning, crying all the way home. Oh, my God. By the time I got home, I was soaked through and through. I ran into the kitchen, sobbing and crying that I'd lost Sari in the haunted house. But she's there. And, and there she was. Uh... Sitting at the kitchen table, comfortable and dry, eating a big slice of chocolate cake, a smug smile Ooh, on her cake. face. That Ooh. bitch. And now, peering into the darkness of the pyramid, I knew Sari was doing the same thing to me. Trying to scare me. Trying to make me look bad. Or was she? As I made my way through the low, narrow tunnel, keeping the light aim straight ahead, I couldn't help it. My anger quickly turned to worry, and troubling questions whirred through my mind. What if she wasn't playing a mean trick on me? What if something bad had happened to her? What if she had missed a step and fallen into a hole? Or had gotten herself trapped in a hidden tunnel? Or... I don't know what. I wasn't thinking clearly. My sneakers thudded loudly over the sandy floor as I started to half walk, half jog through the winding tunnel. I didn't listen to any of that because Dusty was being cute. <laughs> okay. He's so cute, he's hiding his eyes. <clears throat> Sorry, I called frantically now, not caring whether I sounded frightened or not. Where was she? She wasn't that far ahead of me. I should at least be able to see the light from her flashlight, I thought. Sorry! There was no place for her to hide in this narrow space. Was I following the wrong tunnel? No. I had been in the same tunnel all along. The same tunnel I had watched her disappear in. Don't say disappear, I scolded myself. Don't even think the word. 
<clears throat> Suddenly the narrow tunnel ended. A small opening led into a small square room. I flashed the light quickly from side to side. Sorry? No sign of her. The walls were bare. The air was warm and stale. I moved the flashlight rapidly across the floor, looking to s for Sari's footprints. The floor was harder, less sandy here. There were no footprints. Oh! I uttered a low cry when my light came to rest on the object against the far wall. My heart pounding, I eagerly took a few steps closer until I was just a few feet from it. It was the mummy case, also known as the sarcophagus. Yeah, what the fuck is a mummy case? Mummy case? A large stone mummy case, <laughs> at least eight <laughs> feet long. It was rectangular with curved corners. The lid was carved. I stepped closer and aimed the light. Yes. A human face was carved on the lid. The face of a woman. It looked like a death mask, the kind we studied in school. It stared wide-eyed up at the ceiling. Wow, I cried aloud. A real mummy case. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> The carved face on the lid must have been brightly painted at one time, but the color had faded over the centuries. Now the face was, was gray, as pale as death. Staring at the top of the case, smooth and perfect, I wondered if Uncle Ben had seen it, or if I had made a discovery of my own. Why was it all by itself in the small room, I wondered, and what does it hold inside? I was working up my courage to run my hand over the smooth stone of the lid when I heard the creaking sound, and I saw the lid start to rise up. Uh-oh. Oh, a hushed cry escaped my lips. At first, I thought I had imagined it. I didn't move a muscle. I kept the light trained on the lid. The lid lifted a tiny bit more, and I heard a hissing sound come from inside the big coffin, like air escaping a new coffee can when you first open it. What? Folders. We don't get our coffee from cans anymore, R.L. <laughs> Stein. Uttering another low cry, Ooh. I took a step back. The lid raised another inch. I took another step back and dropped the flashlight, because of course I did. I picked it up with a trembling hand and shined it back onto the mummy case. The lid was now open nearly a foot. I sucked in a deep breath of air and held it. I wanted to run, but my fear was freezing me in place. I wanted to scream, but I knew I wouldn't be able to make a sound. The lid creaked and opened another inch. Another inch. I lowered the flashlight to the opening. How many more inches? The light quivering with my hand. From the dark depths of it, the, of the ancient coffin, I saw two eyes staring out at me. Are we done, or do you want to keep going? How, how long is the next chapter? Let's find out. Boom. 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 Uh, let's do another let's, one. Let's do it. Yeah. Chapter six. Two eyes staring out at him. <sighs> I uttered a silent gasp. I froze. I felt a cold chill zigzag down my back. The lid slowly down pushed. My back. The lid slowly pushed open another goddamn inch. The eyes stared out at me. Cold eyes. Evil eyes. Ancient eyes. My mouth dropped open, and before I even realized it, I started to scream. Scream at the top of my lungs. As I screamed, unable to turn away, unable to run, unable to move, the lid slid open all the way. Slowly, as if in a dream, a dark figure raised itself from the depths of the mummy case and climbed out. The mummy case. Sorry. A broad smile widened across her face. Her eyes glowed gleefully. And also coldly, and also evilly. <laughs> Sorry, that wasn't funny. I managed to <laughs> shout in. Okay. Sorry, that wasn't funny! I managed to shout in a high pitched voice that bounced off the stone walls. Uh, I'm just glad it wasn't a dog. Huh? <clears throat> but now she was laughing too hard to hear me. Loud, scornful laughter. <laughs> I was so furious, I searched frantically for something to throw at her. But there wasn't anything, not even a pebble on the floor. Staring at her, my chest still heaving from my fright, I really hated her then. She, made a, she had made a total fool of me. There I had been, screaming like a baby. I knew she'd never let me down. Like a gaby. Let me live it down. <laughs> Never. Never. The look on your face, she exclaimed when I finally stopped, when she finally stopped laughing. I wish I had a so camera. Like... <clears throat> I was too angry to reply. I just growled at her. I pulled the little mummy hand from my back pocket. <laughs> I forgot 
I I began, the little mummy me hand. too <laughs> and began rolling it around in my hand oh my God. i always fiddled with that <laughs> hand when i was upset <laughs> that's a normal sentence it usually did. helped to calm me <laughs> I forgot about the little mummy hand he but, keeps in his pocket. But, That's so weird. But now I felt oh, as if I'd shit. never calmed down. I told you I'd found an empty mummy case yesterday, she said, brushing her hair back off her face. Didn't you remember? I growled again. I felt like a total dork. First, I'd fallen for her dad's stupid mummy costume. And now this. You are kind of a giant dork. Yeah, especially because you're growling. You're growling while caressing a, a tiny mummy, mummy hand. hand. No amount of little mummy hands in the world oh. could calm me down. <laughs> Silently to myself, I vowed to pay her back. If it was the last thing I ever did, it probably will be. Oh. She was still chuckling about her big deal joke. <laughs> right side. <clears throat> The look you had on your face, she said again, shaking her head, rubbing it in. <laughs> you wouldn't like it if I scared you, I muttered angrily. You couldn't scare me, she replied. I don't scare so easily. Ha! Huh. That was the best comeback I could think of. Not very clever, I know, but I was too angry to be clever. I was imagining myself picking Sari up and tossing her back into the mummy case, pulling down the lid and locking it. When I heard footsteps approaching in the tunnel, glancing over at Sari, I saw her expression change. She heard them, too. A few seconds later, Uncle Ben burst into the small room. I could see immediately, even in the dim light, that he was really angry. <clears throat> I thought I could trust in you two, he said, talking through gritted teeth. Dad! <laughs> Sorry, started. Daddy! But he cut her off sharply. I trusted you lot not to wander off without telling me. Do you know how easy it is to get lost in this place? Lost forever? Do you know how many mummy cases are in here? <laughs> Dad! Sorry, started again. I was just showing Gabe this room I discovered yesterday. We were really going to come right back. Really. There are hundreds of tunnels, <laughs> Uncle Ben said heatedly, ignoring Sorry's explanation. Maybe thousands. Many of them have never been explored. No one has ever been in this section of the pyramid before. We have no idea what dangers are there. You two can't just wander off by yourselves. Do you know how frantic I was when I turned around and you were gone? Sorry. Sorry and I both said in unison. Uh. Let's go, Uncle Ben said, gesturing to the door with his flashlight. Your pyramid visit is over for today. We followed him into the tunnel. I felt really bad. Not only had I fallen for Sorry's stupid joke, but I'd made my favorite uncle really angry. No. All my other uncles sucked. <laughs> but this one I like the most. Sari always gets me in trouble, I thought, bitterly, since we were little kids. Now she was walking ahead of me, arm in arm with her dad, telling him something, her face close to his ear. Suddenly they both, both burst out laughing and turned back to look at me. I could feel my face getting hot. I knew what she'd told him. She'd told him about hiding in the mummy case and making me scream like a scared little baby. <laughs> And Contra now they guys. were both chuckling about what a jerk I was. What a big fucking stupid loser I am. Merry Christmas to you too, I called bitterly. It was the best thing I could think of. <laughs> and that made them laugh even harder. <laughs> oh As my it god. Should. As it should. Jesus Christ. <laughs> 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 We spent the night back in the hotel in Cairo. I beat Sari in two straight games of Scrabble, but it didn't make me feel any better. <laughs> didn't play Sari. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> she kept complaining that she had only vowels, and so the games weren't fair. Finally, I put my Scrabble set back in my room, and we sat and stared at the TV. The next morning, we had breakfast in the room. I ordered pancakes, but they didn't taste like any pancakes I'd ever eaten. They were tough and grainy, as if they were made of cowhide or something. You ain't jerky. Okay. What are we doing today? Sorry, asked Uncle Ben, who was still yawning and stretching after two cups of black coffee. I have an appointment at the Cairo Museum, he told us, glancing at his wristwatch. It's just a couple blocks away. I thought you two might like to wander around the museum while I have my meeting. Ooh, thrills and chills, Sorry said sarcastically. She slurped up another spoonful of Frosted Flakes. Why would you give Frosted Flakes if there are pancakes? Oh my god. 
The little Frosted Flakes box had Arabic writing all over it, and Tony the Tiger was saying something in Arabic. I wanted to save it and take it home to show my friends, but I knew Sari would make fun of me if I asked her for it, so I didn't. To Good God! Jesus Get a grip on yourself, Christ. Gabe! Tony the Tiger had been replaced by Carl the Camel. <laughs> I mean, like... But the... no, that's fucked up. Like... <laughs> Get control of yourself. Yes. Get control of it. Have some self-respect, Exactly. Gabe. Exactly. Have some goddamn self-respect. The museum has an interesting mummy Jesus collection, Christ. Gabe, Uncle Ben said to me. I want some black coffee. That's my uh, coffee. Uh, okay. Let's stay up all night. Okay. He tried to it's pour only, himself a third cup of coffee, but the pot was empty. So tired. You'll like it. <laughs> Unless they, cli- unless they climb out of their cases, sorry, I said. Lame. <laughs> really lame. I stuck my tongue out at her. She tossed a wet, frosted flake across the table at me. When are my mom and dad getting back? I asked Uncle Ben. I never I thought s- I'd miss those losers. I suddenly realized I missed them. Oh. He started to answer, but the phone rang. He walked into the bedroom and picked it up. It was an old-fashioned black telephone with a dial instead of buttons. As he talked, his face filled with concern. Change of plan. He said a few seconds later, hanging up the receiver and coming back into the living room. What's the matter, Daddy? Sorry asked, shoving her cereal bowl away. It's very strange, he replied, scratching the back of his head. Two of my workers came down sick last night. Some kind of mysterious Curse. illness. His expression <laughs> became thoughtful, worried. They took them to a hospital here in Cairo. He started to gather up his wallet and some other belongings. I think I'd better get over there right away, he said. <laughs> but what about Gabe and me? Sorry, he asked, glancing at me. <clears throat> I'll only be gone an hour or so, her dad replied. Stay here in the room, okay? In the room? Sorry, cried, making it sound like a punishment. Well, okay, you can go down to the lobby if you want, but don't leave the hotel. I don't know why I'm trusting you, since you couldn't follow my instructions yesterday. But anyway, a few minutes later, he pulled on his tan safari jacket, checked one last time to make sure he had his wallet and keys, and hurried out the door. Sari and I stared at each other glumly. What do you want to do? I asked, poking the cold, uneaten pancakes on my plate with a fork. Sari shrugged. Is it hot in here? I nodded. Yeah, it's about 120. Uh, we have to get out of here, she said, standing up, stretching. You mean go to the lobby? I asked, still poking the pancakes, pulling them into pieces with the fork. No, I mean get out of here, she replied. She walked over to the mirror in the entranceway and began brushing her straight black hair. But Uncle Ben said, I started, we won't go far, she said, and then quickly added, if you're afraid. I made a face at her. I don't think she saw me. She was busy admiring admiring her changing body in the mirror. (laughs) Okay, I told her. We could go to the museum. Your dad said it was just a block away. I hadn't learned anything from what happened yesterday. (laughs) Take us home, Becca. All right. I was determined not to be the wimp anymore. If she wanted to disobey her dad and go out, fine with me. From now on, I decided I'll be the macho guy. No repeats of yesterday. Ever again. The museum, she made a face. Well, okay, she said, turning to look at me. We're 12 after all. It's not like we're babies. You're babies. No, you are babies. We can go out if we want. No, you can't. You're babies. No, you're babies. Yes, we can, I said. No, no you you're babies. You're babies. Babies. I'll write Uncle Ben a note and tell him where we're going in case he gets back before we do. I went over to the desk and picked up a pen and a small pad of paper. If you're afraid, Gaby, we can just walk around the block, she said in a teasing voice, staring at me, waiting to see how I'd react. No way, I said. We're going to the museum. Unless you're afraid. No way, she said, imitating me. And don't call me Gaby, I added. Gaby, 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 she muttered, just to be annoying, annoying me and everyone else. I wrote the note to Uncle Ben. Then we took the elevator down to the lobby. Sure, he won't be mad. We asked a young woman behind the desk where the Cairo Museum was. She said to turn right outside the hotel and walk two blocks. Oh, it's two fucking blocks away. What a big deal that is. <laughs> what a big Sorry deal. Sorry, he hesitated as we stepped out into the bright sunshine. You sure you're up for this? What could go wrong, I replied. Below grade level is a Cactus Radio production. 
You can contact us at podcast at cactusrodeo.com. Subscribe and follow on iTunes, Stitcher, and Spotify, and follow Cactus Rodeo on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for more entertainment and updates. Mm-hmm.